All right, so today we are going to learn how to make a poster for a movie based off of the movie Oppenheimer. So stick around and I'll show you how to get this look using some different images, but we'll try to keep the vibe similar. All right, let's hop in. So first thing we wanna do is head over to Photoshop and create a new document. All right, for this project, we're gonna go ahead and set our uh, document size to inches. We'll set the width to six and the height to nine. We're gonna set the resolution to 150 and we'll set the color to CMYK because this is going to be for a poster that we would most likely print out. All right, let's go ahead and hit create and get started. So we start off with our movie poster document here. And the first thing we want to do, and I'll kind of refer back to this image from time to time, but the first thing I'm going to actually do is drag this image into my project. And the reason I like doing that is because it gives me the option to set up some rulers to try to keep the sizes similar. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go right up here to where it says view rulers and then that'll allow me to drag guides down. So I'm going to drag a guide down to the top of his hat. I'm going to drag a guide down to where the first line of text is and then I'm going to add a guide where his sort of pants kind of fade out. So I'm gonna put one right on the top of the casing here and that'll do it. Um, so I might refer back to this from time to time, but I can just turn the eyeball off for that image. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is import our Oppenheimer, which in this case is gonna be played by actor John Hamm, also known as the only other guy that I could find in a suit and fedora that kind of matched the image. So. What I'm gonna do is drag him down so that his hat is right around the same spot. I'm kind of looking at his waist and where that hits in relation. If I drag the Oppenheimer up to the top, you can see that I'm just kind of looking at the width of his shoulders and how he's sitting in this image versus my Don Draper here. And I think it's actually pretty decent. Obviously he's standing a little sideways, but for what we're doing, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Okay, so what I wanna do next is I wanna pull uh, John Hamm here out of this photo. And so what I'm gonna do is select this layer, grab the object select tool, and just simply drag out a box over the subject. Give that a second, and everything looks pretty good with the exception of this unwanted little area up here. So if I want to get rid of that, I can just go back to the object selection tool, hold down the button, and switch to the quick selection tool. And the reason I'm doing that is because with the quick selection tool, I can hold down option. Notice that if I make this nice and big, quick selection tool by default has a plus sign in the middle of it, which means if I dragged it around, it would add to this selection. But since I want to remove from this selection, I can hold down the option key and you see that plus sign turns into a minus and then I can quickly remove that unwanted area. And while I'm here, I'll double check to make sure that everything is actually selected. Notice that with the fedora, we lost a little bit right up here in the corners. It's always a good idea to always double check when you're using automated selections. See, we notice we lost a little bit of his fedora. So there was actually quite a bit there. And I can smooth this out by just holding option and trying to grab that whole hat brim. It looks like we need to grab a little bit over here. Maybe up there in the highlights. We're losing a little bit. Okay. You can't really do a good composite without good selections. It's just you're kind of spinning your wheels. If you're not going to take the time to get a good selection and you're going to do all that work, you're going to end up going back noticing that there's chunks missing and areas of your photo. Like a lot of this sort of backlighting, which I really want, is getting cut off. By backlighting, I mean this light 
little edge right around the sort of edge of his jacket here that's just a little brighter and is being created by the lights behind him. All right, that looks pretty decent. And again, I'm just zooming in using Command Plus and using the spacebar to drag around the image. That's looking pretty good here. We'll just clean up this spot right there and move on. Okay, so once we have a good selection, we can copy this to a new layer by hitting Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And at that point we have him clipped out. And so what I'll do next is just basically delete the layer with the background, this one right here, because we don't need it. So I'll get that out of my layer stack by just dragging it to the trash. And the next thing I want to do is erase the lower part of him so he blends into the background. To do that, we're going to basically add a layer mask. A layer mask is something that allows us to erase non-destructively. So down in the lower right hand corner of your layers tab, you will see a rectangle with a circle in the middle of it. And if you click that with the layer selected, it will add a mask to that layer. Let's go ahead and make these thumbnails nice and big. There we go. So this is my layer mask right here. And all I need to do now is hit the B key to get a brush tool. I'm gonna to hit the right bracket key to make my brush nice and big. I'm also gonna go up to where it says right here in the brush settings. I'm gonna set the hardness down to zero. You can also do that up here in the upper left-hand side as well. And I'm just gonna, with, again, with a nice big brush, that's gonna give me a nice soft edge. Drag this thing out of the way. I'm just gonna come down here and erase the bottom of my subject. Now notice my flow up here is only set to 75. I'm gonna go ahead and crank that up to 100. That way I'll be able to get rid of that area in the bottom. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is find some sort of big object to put behind him. Now, I'm not gonna spend the time to find a nuclear bomb casing. In this case, I'm gonna substitute it for a image that I found on DeviantArt, and it is simply <laughs> a science fiction orb with a nice cool background behind it. We might be able to use some of that background, and we'll go ahead and stretch it out and try to make it kind of match the size that we got from the Oppenheimer poster. So, for now, I can put this over him, although I will move it. Notice how this is a little bit more of an oval, so I'm gonna hit Command T, and I wanna stretch this image out. Command T is free transform. That's gonna allow me to stretch and move and rotate this image. And since I wanna stretch it, rather than just enlarge it, I need to hold down the Shift key. If I just drag the free transform tools, it will stretch it evenly, from all sides. But if I hold down shift, I can actually warp the image. And this is a case where I actually want to do that. So I don't want to go too much right about there, just kind of getting it back to a little bit more of a circle. And then at this point, I want to go ahead and make it a lot bigger. Because if you notice, the image in the Oppenheimer poster uh, fills the screen. If we turn it on here, you can see that it's, it's getting cut off on the edges and we get this kind of uh, arc over the top. So I wanna try to, let's see, if there's, there's a guide right there at the top of it, so I'm gonna use this middle guide, and I'm going to place this right there. And again, maybe I'll decide to go a little bit bigger with it later, but right now that should be fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna drag this underneath my Oppenheimer image. Okay, so, we're starting to get the pieces together, and now we need to think about flames and sparks and color. If we want to go ahead and address the color right away, this is going to be one of the easier things to do. Uh, to at least get us in the ballpark of color, what we're going to do is create a new solid. So you can go down to your adjustment layers in the lower right hand corner of your layers panel. And if you click on that, you will see the option to create a new solid color. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that button. But basically we wanna go with like a pretty saturated orange. So I'm gonna go maybe just a touch lighter. I'll be adding red in later. So I don't wanna go too crazy with the red right now. 
And right about there should be good. We can always change this if we want to. So I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna drag this above both the subject and the background. And once I do that, I'm gonna select it, go up to where it says Normal, those are your blend modes, and I'm gonna go down to a color blend mode at the bottom. And right there, that's gonna to start to get us into the ballpark of this image. Notice that our contrast isn't nearly as dark. We don't have the red added in just yet, but we'll get there. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is add in some sparks. And so I have this image right here of some sparks. And the idea with this is that we're just going to use it in a lot of different sizes in a lot of different spots. So let's go ahead and drag that over and stretch it out a little bit. And let's start by just doing something like this. And we'll go ahead and hit return to turn off the free transform controls. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna select it and hit Command J to duplicate it. And for the duplicate, I'll hit the V key to get the move tool. I'll drag it up and then I'll hit Command T. That's gonna allow me to rotate and distort it a little bit. I obviously don't want this uh, noticeable shape to be repeated because it becomes very obvious that you're just using the same image in lots of different uh, locations. So I'll set it kind of over there and then I'll hit Command J again and let's drag one more duplicate over here. We'll hit Command T and we will rotate it again to just try to mask the fact that we're using the same image in multiple places. Go ahead and hit return. Now we have these three layers and obviously they are blocking everything below. So we need to blend these in with the layers beneath them. And to do that, we're gonna grab these and set them to, we have a couple options to be honest. We could try lighten or screen. Just noticing lighten right now seems to be giving us better colors than screen. Screen kind of turns it a little yellow. But for now, let's go with lighten. So I'm gonna grab all of these and set them to the lighten blend mode. And that starts to bring in some sparks, but you're gonna see here in a second we have a problem. Because we're using the lighten blend mode, the sparks are only really showing up over the darker areas and they're not filling in this area down at the bottom. Notice this is all very dark in the poster. So we need to figure out a way to darken the edges while not darkening the center. And I think the best way to do that is gonna be with a radial gradient. So to create a radial gradient, we're gonna go down to the adjustment layer button on the lower right corner of the layers tab. Click on that and choose gradient. Now by default, this is giving me a white to clear gradient, which is not what I want. So we need to change that by just clicking right in this color here and going over to the stops. Up top here is your opacity stop and down here is your color stop. So I'm gonna set that to black by clicking and just changing it to black. And there we go. Over here, notice that we've got complete opacity, which is exactly what we want. If you're seeing color on this side, click up here and set this down to zero. All right, now we have a gradient. Let's go ahead and switch this from linear to radial. And let's reverse it so that the dark spot is not in the center, but on the outside. There we go, okay. So that is starting to help. Now we can go ahead and click okay for now. And at this point, I'm thinking that I would rather not have all of these guides all over my screen. And so I'm gonna go ahead and choose View, Guides, Clear Guide. You can see that our sparks in some areas are showing up better. Notice that the gradient is in between the sparks over here on my Layers tab. So I'm gonna try dragging it to the bottom. And all of a sudden we start to see, okay, it's coming together. I could also try moving it underneath the color solid just to see how that changes. Notice that when it's under the color solid, it kind of blends everything together a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because what's happening now is the color from the color solid is now affecting that gradient and all of a sudden we're, we're getting in the ballpark. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. 
probably need to add some more sparks. Now, one thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is take a look at my sparks. Notice in the poster, there's a lot of them at the bottom, but not too many up top. So I'm gonna to try to fill those in. Notice there's no sparks on his face. So I'm gonna avoid that. And so I'm gonna look at the ones I have on the bottom and maybe consider stretching them out a little bit, make them a little bigger, a little more prominent in the shot. You have a little bit of leeway with things like sparks and uh, something like that is feeling a little better. I definitely want to see some more of the sparks on the side here. And so in order to do that, I have to darken in the sides. Go ahead and hit return. One way to darken in the sides is to go back to your gradient, double click on the thumbnail. That'll bring up your gradient fill controls and then I could play with the scale. You can make it a little smaller and see what that does. But notice without a blend mode, I don't want to go too crazy with it because then I'll lose the image underneath it. So 70 seems to be okay for now. So we're just going to have our gradient underneath our color and we can get our sparks. We can move them around a little bit, try to get the results we're going for here by just scaling them up a little bit and moving them around in a way that looks as much like the poster as possible. Uh, what you'll be doing is the exact same thing I'm doing, just moving them around and trying to find the best results to really match this very heavy sparked area. Now notice there's a couple blurry ones here. We'll add those in next. Okay, so that's going to be probably okay for now. One thing else I'm also going to do is I'm going to merge all of these sparks together onto one layer because rather than having three separate ones, if I have one, it's gonna make the masking job easier. So I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna select these three layers. Again, you do that by clicking on one layer at the bottom, holding shift, click the top layer, that selects them all. Then we'll right click and choose merge layers. That's just gonna merge the layers that are selected. It also took off, of our, took off our blend mode, so we'll put that back on as a light and blend mode. Okay, let's take a second and address the contrast in this image. It's way too low contrast right now. Everything's very soft and our black values aren't very aren't high enough to really match the poster. So one way that we can fix that is with a levels filter. So we'll go down to uh, create a new adjustment layer. We'll go down to levels and with that set, we'll go up to the properties up here and we'll start by dragging our black to the right. And you can see that that's starting to give us that very high contrast feeling that we were getting from the poster. And I'm going to pretty much put it right under this first spike at 31. I'm also going to take my whites and bring those in a little bit. That'll also add some contrast and I'll set those to 239. And then I'll grab my midtones and just play around with those, see if I dragging those to the right seems to help add that contrast. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to cook the image, so to speak. But that looks good for now. And again, we can always adjust that later. Now let's go ahead and go down to our sparks. We just flattened those so that we could basically add a mask to them and erase these sparks off of his face. So we'll go down and click the mask button with the fire layer selected. And we'll hit a B key for a brush. We'll shrink it down a little using the left bracket key. And we'll just remove some of these sparks from his face. Again, we might choose to add more in later. Okay, so we have some little blurred out sparks that we need to add into this shot. So we'll go ahead and grab our sparks image. We'll drag in another version. There's our sparks right there. And what we're gonna do with this one is we'll drag it up to the top. There we go. Okay, so we'll hit Command T, we'll stretch it out a little bit, and we're gonna to try to create that soft out of focus look that we're seeing in the movie poster. And so again, just to make sure that I don't make it look 
too obvious that I'm using the same image. I want to play with it a little bit, rotate it around, and that looks good right there. And I'm going to set it to the same blend mode as before, which is lighten. So notice right now that we see this stripe coming through here. And what that means is that we need to drag this somewhere else. If we put it underneath the levels filter, you notice that that sort of semi opacity goes away when we put it under the levels filter. Now we have it under there and you can see there's that new layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this layer. We're going to go up to filters. We're going to go down to blur and we're going to look at motion blur. Because really what we want to do is kind of blur this in a certain direction. And I'm going to go ahead and crank it up a lot. Notice we have a preview in this window right here. I'm also going to play with the angle a little bit. At this point, it's looking pretty good, but the sparks are pretty small. So I might click OK and then come back to this layer, hit Command T, and just try to make those sparks a lot bigger. Now notice it's turning off the filter while I do this. So I'm seeing the original image. Let's go ahead and hit return and it'll put the filter back on. Let's drag them up a little bit. And again, the problem that we're running into, the reason we're not seeing them as well as we would like, that's pretty good right there, is because it's just not dark enough down here. And so let's go ahead and address that right now. We need to darken in this lower area. Let's look back at the main image. Okay, notice how it's really dark down here. And the one thing that we do see is that we have this, uh, we have this edge lighting on his jacket, which really cuts him out from the background. And we want to keep something like that or add it into our photo. And that's to go back to our radial gradient. Scoot it up a little bit. And then I can use the mask to reveal a little bit more of him. And I think that actually might work well. So I can honestly probably keep it right about where we had it at 70, but we'll just move it up a little bit. And once we've done that, then we'll come over here and we'll click on the mask connected to the gradient. And we'll use the B key We'll make sure it's set to black. We can come down here and just remove a little bit of that gradient. But if that's too much, which I think it is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to flow and I'm going to set it down to 50%. So it's basically erasing with an eraser that's only going to erase half of what's underneath it. It's a good way to blend together. I'm still seeing a little bit too much of that orb or whatever these lines are but we could always go back to our Don Draper layer, click on the mask, set the brush back to white this time, and we could actually, by hitting the X key, we could actually paint back in a little bit of his jacket that we erased earlier. Again, this is why we use masks. Now I think we need to get that highlight in up top because if you notice on the poster, there is a very big bright light right kind of going along the top of this. Now, there's lots of different ways we could approach that. One, the way that I've decided to do it is by getting a picture of a volcano. Um, and here is the image that I found on Google Images. And my thought is that if I could hide this behind the orb and just let it let the natural edge of the orb kind of mask out what's below here, we might be able to hide the fact that this is actually a volcano. So what I want to do is I want to put this behind this sci-fi orb, which just means that I need to come over here. I'll delete this for now. Come over here and put the orb on its own layer, which is very easy to do. What I mean by that is if I, if I turn off all these other layers here, and we just come down to our sci-fi layer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select it. I'm going to grab the object select tool or I could use quick select, either one, and I'm just gonna click and let Photoshop find the edges, which look fine. And then and instead of hitting Command C, Command V, this time I'm just gonna hit Command J. And if you look down at the layer stack over here, you can see that this is now on its own layer. And what's cool about that is that now if I wanna put the volcano behind it, I'll be using the actual uh, orb itself to mask out what I don't want to see. So I don't need to get rid of the background layer because I don't mind the shadows and some of this rigging. So let's go ahead and grab 
our volcano layer, drag it over to the image, and I'm going to put it underneath the second orb. And then with the V key, I'll scoot it up, and we'll just take a look at how that looks with all the layers turned on. Okay, so you can see it's getting pretty kind of muted, and that's the, uh, that's the radial gradient that is kind of taking away a lot of the punch from that uh, volcano. But again, that's no big deal because the radial gradient has a mask on it already, so I just need to erase the part of the gradient that is affecting the volcano. So, first thing I want to do is kind of play with the scale a little bit, take a look at the original poster, and just sort of see. Basically, we've got a lot of smoke and this little highlight and maybe a little highlight over there. So that's kind of what I want to emulate with this volcano. So let's turn off the poster. Let's look at the volcano. And what I'm thinking first off is we should scale it up. So if I hit Command T and I increase the size, now we kind of have the smoke, maybe even rotate it a little bit to try to kind of disguise what it actually is. Maybe drop it down just a touch. And again, I'm going to turn off the eyeball on that gradient. And all of a sudden, it's not too bad, right? We've got that highlight in kind of the same spot. We've got all this smoke that we're getting for free from the volcano. The only thought in my head would be, would we want to maybe scale it up even a little bit bigger to kind of fill that smoke into the back of the shot and kind of just hide the mountain, leave that in there. Now we're getting some extra stuff on the sides. We can obviously mask that out if that's an issue. Okay, there we go. So we've got our kind of a highlight in there, but we can't see it the way we want to. So let's go ahead and go down to our gradient, our radial gradient, and we'll select the mask. We'll hit the B key. We'll make sure that it is set to black. Currently it is set to white. So I'm gonna hit the X key to reverse that. And then I can come over here and paint out that gradient and really bring back some of the punch of that highlight. And obviously I can kind of just go as far as I want. And if I go too far, I just hit the X key and I can paint back in some of the areas that I took out. But before we get to that, let's do one more thing. So again, we are not nearly as dark down here as the movie poster is. There's just not as much separation and so what I want to do is start darkening some of these areas. Um, and the way that I like to do that is actually a process. It's called dodging and burning. I hit the plus key that creates a new layer. I'm going to drag it up to the top. And once I have it up there, I'm going to set it to soft light. Now I might opt to send that to hard light or excuse me, overlay. But for now, I'll set it to soft light. And the reason I like to do that is this is how I like to dodge and burn. Um, rather than using the dodge and burn tool, I create a layer, I set it to soft light, and I use a brush. So I'm going to hit the B key. I'm going to set the color to black by hitting the X key. And I'm going to come in here and paint. But I'm going to lower the flow on my, uh, on my pen. Now, one thing I definitely don't want to do is I don't want to paint over the edge lighting on Don Draper here. And I'm almost tempted to take this dodge and burn and put it below my subject. That would allow me to dodge and burn him separately. So you'll see what happens here. By putting that layer below the subject, we can go ahead and click on it and label it dodge and burn. And now I can come over here and notice that I'm darkening in this background, but it's not really affecting my subject because he's on top of the layer. So that's allowing me to come in here and really make this a whole lot darker. And since I really want to do this quickly, I'll bump up my flow to like 70. And you notice I'll, at a certain point, I'll just kind of hit a limit where it's not really doing much else. And if I don't feel like it's dark enough, and darkening in the area right behind him should make him pop nicely. If I don't feel like it's dark enough, I can go back to that layer and I could try setting it to overlay, which as you can see, makes it a little bit darker. 
You could also check some of the other options like hard light. Let's try zooming out. Let's take a look at linear light here. All right, that seems to be working nicely because again, it's just giving us control. We might have to go back in and reduce some of these sparks a little bit, reduce some of these big flames, but as far as the color, we're getting in the ballpark. Now, another thing we could do would be to put a layer actually on Don Draper, which would just be a matter of creating an additional layer, dragging it above, setting it to soft light. And now I could come in here and darken up parts of his suit a little bit. I could try to enhance some of these lights on his shoulders. So again, let's go ahead and this time I'm gonna drop my flow down to say 30. I wanna kinda darken in the front of his suit a little bit. Just right there, I don't wanna go too crazy. I could even try to add a little bit more shadow on his face or punch up the shadows. If you, if you look at the Oppenheimer photo, his face is just pretty much black on that side. So coming over here and just punching those up wouldn't be a bad thing. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the highlights. I'm gonna hit the X key now again so I have a white color and I'm gonna come in here and try to lighten up some of this edge lighting on his shoulders. I'm gonna shrink it down and come in here with a smaller brush and just try to paint in a little bit of edge lighting on his jacket. And that's gonna, like I said, just help separate him from the background a little bit. Okay. All right, so we got some flames, we've got our highlight, things are starting to kind of come together here. So we've got our blurry spikes. Let's go ahead and take a look at our sparks here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this layer of sparks. I'm going to add a mask to it, and I am going to use a black brush to remove some of these sparks that we have on our screen. And so I'll hit the X key, I'll uh, use my bracket keys to move these up, and I'm just using a brush set to a 33 flow to come in here and just, just remove a little bit of this. Maybe even round those off just a touch. Let's go back to the main uh, image here. At this point, I feel like we could try to add in a little bit of red to try to widen our color palette a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm thinking is a radial gradient that is red set to a color blend mode. Could add some red highlights around the edges. We'll go down to our adjustment layers. We'll select gradient. We will change the color from black to red. Go with a fully saturated, probably a dark red. So yeah, something like that. Click OK, click OK up there, then set this to radial, uh, reverse it. And at this point, before I even really play with the scale, I'm gonna go ahead and add a blend mode to it so it starts to blend with the image. Notice I have this below my levels filter. And let's go ahead and just click OK for now. Come down to color. All right, look at what that does right there. There it is without it. There it is with it. It's kind of, uh, it's killing our yellows a little bit. And so again, the nice thing about uh, radial gradients is that they have the ability to mask. So I could very easily just select the mask next to this gradient. I could hit uh, B for the brush tool and I could come up here and set it to white. So I'm gonna hit X and I could come up and just paint out some of that red and try to kind of keep some of that orange color in some of these areas. I can also increase the flow on my brush to make that process a little quicker and a little easier. And if I still feel like I have too much red, the next step would be to kind of double click on it and just go up to the scale and increase the scale. I might even go just a touch wider. There you go, now it's giving us just a nice red around the edges. And again, switch it to a color blend mode. And all of a sudden, I'd say we're looking pretty decent. Probably don't need to do too much more to this image. Add in some text and the names of the actors. And as far as the image is concerned, I'm tempted to add a little bit more yellow to the image because I just don't feel like we're getting that. We could also try to add in some additional smoke back here, or we could go back to that volcano image 
and we could use the clone stamp to add in more uh, smoke. I think that would look good. Let's take a quick look at that. Let's go ahead and just turn off all these layers. Take us back to our volcano image. And again, I'm thinking of just hitting the S key for the clone stamp tool, stretching it out, grabbing some of these uh, clouds. Now again, I'm gonna set this to a soft brush so that it blends nicely. So I'm gonna drop the hardness down to zero. Come over here, hold down Option, select those clouds and just come and stamp them in over here. Now it's telling me that this is a smart object that must be rasterized before I uh, use the clone stamp and that is not a problem. If you look at the icon down here, you'll see there is a little smart object icon and rasterizing it will just remove that. So we'll click OK and that rasterizes it. And now I can come over here and stamp in some more clouds. Now, again, you wanna be careful to not just sort of repeat the same cloud over and over, it becomes very obvious. And so if that happens, then just come over here and resample in a new spot. So if I come back over, let's grab a little bit of this cloud. Let's hit the, hold the option key and click. And that gives me that cloud that I could then stamp in and we could do the same over here get some nice highlight clouds in there and again just be careful not to go crazy with the same cloud over and over hit option i'll grab that uh that's probably good right there let's go ahead all right so now let's turn our layers back on see what we got and let's take a look here i think we're missing a layer all right, and there we go. We have our clouds, we have our subject, we have this explosion now happening. And again, we might opt to go back to that black radial gradient and remove a little bit more. If we wanna let a little more of those clouds in, we can go to that radial gradient. We can hit the B key to get our brush tool, make sure it's set to black. I'm gonna set the flow down to like 50 and make it nice and big. And just come over here and again, make sure that you are on the mask layer before you start drawing. Just come over here and my color has been set to white, so I'll hit X one more time. There we go. And just decide how much of that black I wanna keep. Now, if that's too much, then I just hit the X key and I can go kinda of draw it back in. Keep that nice vignette while still showing some of that color through. So, let's take one last look here and see where we're at. Again, I just think we need to pop a little bit more yellow highlight in there. So we'll go down to the adjustment layers. We'll create a new solid. We will set it to bright yellow. Click OK. Now this is underneath a layer, so it's, it's getting affected by it. Let's drag it up to the top. And let's try adding a color blend mode. Okay, so obviously that's affecting everything, which is way too much. And what we could do, again, is it's got a mask right next to it, so we could try to paint out anything we don't want to let the layers underneath show through. Also, this color of yellow isn't quite what we're looking for, so let's double click on that. And let's see, maybe we need a little bit more orange in that yellow. And maybe even a touch lighter. Give that a try right there. Click OK. Now again, since this is a color layer, we could try moving it around in the stack and see what that does. If we put it below the orange one, we're really not gonna see it at all. If we put it above the orange one, we can see there's some highlight in there. And if we put it above the red gradient, you notice that we lose the red gradient, so we want it below that. And at this point, the idea is select it, hit the B key, and just come over here and remove a lot of it. Find the areas where we don't want as much yellow, bring those down, and just take control. Okay, so in order to get a little bit more highlight up here in the top, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the volcano, I'm gonna hit Command J, and I am going to Hit, then hit the V key and slide it over here. 
And then I'm going to set the blend mode for the second layer to screen or lighten. I think lighten looks better right here. So we'll pick lighten. And you can see that it's blending both those in. We're still getting those shadows. I might even come over to the original one, hit Command T, scale it up just a little bit to kind of increase the overall highlight up here. I think we're looking way better now. We really wanted a bright light up here. And I think this is giving it to us. Those clouds are looking nice overlapping like that. Here we go. All right, so let's wrap this up here. There's a couple more things we need to do. We need to add in some text. We can copy that frame. Uh, and I think we need to reduce our sparks just a little bit. If we look at the image here, we can see they're kind of just sort of a lower sort of wrapping here. We've got some scattered up here, but not too many up top. Whereas if we look at our image, we can see they're kind of everywhere. So let's go ahead and select our sparks layer. We've got a mask already attached to it. So we can hit the B key to get the black brush and we can erase some of those sparks. And there we go. Now we can also set our flow down to like 50 and that way it's gonna not completely erase them, just really sort of minimize them. They're still there, but they're just half the opacity that they were at. And that's creating a slightly nicer blending. Still leaves a little bit there. And then we need to go to the blur layer, which was ones that had the motion blur, and maybe minimize those just a little bit as well. Again, just kind of take some of those down. We don't need them anywhere really near his face. Kind of lower that a little bit. Go back, take a look at the image. We don't really need all those big, thick, chunky ones down at the bottom down here. So we could go back to our flattened layer and again, just reduce them. I don't want to get rid of them entirely. I'm just going to put my mouse over it, just click once. That way they're still there. They're just not quite as dominant. Okay, at this point, I think we are about as good as we're going to get color-wise. All right, so we've got this little flare right up there. Let's go ahead and get one of those into our project as well. So the way I'm going to do that is literally just by going to the internet and typing in light rays. And so to do that, you just go to Google, type in light rays. You might want to go to images. You might want to go to tools and set it to large. In this case, I've got this light ray right here that I've downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that one in. And there we go. Now, first thing I'm going to do is set it below my levels effect. And then we will go ahead and shrink it down and put a blend mode on it as well. So I'm going to put it right up there at the top. And let's go ahead and drop a lighten blend mode onto that. And again, lighten's awesome because it takes away all the black and just leaves us with the light ray. Notice we got a little crayon icon in there. We'll go ahead and remove that when we add the mask. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right there. That looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and select the layer, add a mask, hit the B key for the brush tool, make sure it's set to black, and we'll go ahead and erase whatever we don't want. And I've got my flow set to about 54 right now. So that should do a nice job of kind of minimizing that. Blend mode looks pretty good. I might opt to lower the opacity just a little bit, just to try to minimize. I don't want it to be too, uh, draw your eye too much. So we'll just tuck it right back in there. And that looks pretty good right there. Now we've got those light rays Okay, so at this point, I'd say we're done with the color and everything. Let's go ahead and add in some text real quick. Now, from what I can tell, this just looks like Helvetica. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the title of the movie. And I'm going to go ahead and just click. We're set to Helvetica New. Let's go ahead and just type that out. We can switch the weight when we've typed it out. And since we got Don Draper in this one, I'm gonna call this one Drapenheimer. And as far as the color, 
Let's go ahead and go back to the original one. Let's hit the I key for the eyedropper. Let's select that orange. Now it's loaded in over here. In order to pick this color, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my swatches, go to window, swatches. There's that orange we just sampled right there. Let's go ahead and uh, click on the color here and then we'll just go click that orange. There we go. So we'll turn off the poster. There's our Drapenheimer. Now, as far as the weight and all of that, this does not look like Helvetica. Let's see, is it Helvetica new? Yeah, it looks pretty close. Might be a slightly heavier weight, something like bold. Yeah, that looks right. And I'm gonna come over here to the actual properties. And first thing I'm gonna do is scale up the font a little bit by just dragging over the T's right here. And then I'm gonna go over to the tracking. And we're gonna just click on the VA part of the tracking and spread these out just a little bit to kind of match that look that we have here in the poster. My orange appears to be a little bit more saturated than what I'm seeing in the poster. And this might be a good opportunity to come over here and drop a quick guide to match the image. Actually, ruler's already out there, so I can just drag a guide down. There's one for the movie. And here is one for the text. Okay, I'll turn that off. We'll go over here, grab our text, pop it up in between there, and make sure our margins look good. At this point, I like using the arrow keys to just nudge. That looks pretty good right there. Zoom in a little bit. And we will type in a film by Motion Creative Media. All right, and then we'll select that, shrink it down. We're gonna change its color to white, drag it down into place, and then I will adjust its size. Again, just double click on the icon, that will highlight it. And we actually have two different sizes going on here. We've got the size of the film by, which is smaller than the size of the actual name. So we'll go ahead and select a film by, shrink that down just a little bit. And also let's take a look at the weight here because it doesn't necessarily look like they are using Helvetica New Bold. I think it's something lighter like Helvetica Medium or maybe even Helvetica Light. So let's go ahead and select text we'll go up to the weights and we'll set it to let's try medium that looks pretty good okay and now let's just scale it up a little bit to fit in there now notice it's not going to let me scale right now because these are both uh, two different sizes so at this point I'm just going to um, click off select it and just hit command T and that will allow me to scale it up just gonna get it so it fits right in between those two guides hit return Use the arrow keys to nudge it back into place. And that pink line right there lets me know that I'm centered and I'll just bring it up a touch. Now, another thing we might wanna do is copy this little frame from the poster. So let's go ahead and just grab this right out of here. We'll go ahead and hit view, clear guides. I'm gonna to go to guides, clear guides. And the way I'm gonna select this is by blowing it up dragging a little box in here on the inside and then I'm going to hit shift command I and that will select the inverse. Now you can tell that we have selected a little bit of the picture behind it but that's not a big deal, we'll fix that. So again I just selected the inside of the frame which would have by default selected everything that is inside the frame but by hitting shift command I, it will select everything outside, which is what it did. So we can just hit command J to copy and paste that frame to a new layer. And there we go. Now, obviously we've got a little issue at the top. So we're gonna hit command T and hold down shift and just stretch this a little bit. 
Okay. Now we just have a little bit more text in here to add 721.3 shot with IMAX. And now that I look at this, I can tell this color of this text is not actually white. It's got quite a bit of yellow in it. And so we'll go ahead and try to match that. Okay, so I went ahead and added in the rest of the text. And the last thing I'm going to do is come down and take a look at the sparks. Um, I've gone ahead and duplicated the spark layer, the one that was covering the whole screen. And we'll go ahead and turn that on. So I've made some of these sparks a little bigger. I scaled them up because I felt like we were missing out on some of the larger sparks in here. And so the last thing we'll talk about is adding this layer of sparks. And for this one, I'm tempted to set it to something other than lighten. It definitely doesn't look bad at lighten. In fact, I do like it there. But soft light gives us a certain kind of darkness and contrast that I think also fits the image pretty well. And it's just giving us that nice contrast and punch that we get in the Oppenheimer poster. It's also blackening in some of the additional areas. So this one's really up to taste. You know, we could try doing lighten and then duplicating it a second time and sometimes having that second layer, or we could set the second layer to soft light and then lower its opacity just a little bit. And I think at the end of the day, that's where I'm gonna leave it right there. So let's pull our layers up here, take a quick look at what we used. And we can see here that we don't need this background layer. We didn't use that. But we basically used two volcanoes, two orbs, a little dodge and burn layer, one above the background, one above our subject. We took advantage of most of our masks. For color, we used this orange solid and this yellow solid set to color and added a, a radial gradient, a couple layers of sparks, and a little highlight, a bunch of text, a, layers fil a levels filter, and that is going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something here. And more than anything, I hope you took away some new techniques that you can apply to your work. And just realize that once you kind of have an understanding of how this all works, um, creating something like this is definitely within everyone's reach. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Stick around. We got more on the way.